friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. In today's video, I'm super excited because I'm going to be collabing with my friend Annette from the channel Annette's Makeup Corner. I am positive you've already heard of Annette's, but if you haven't, please check her out. She is so colorful, fun. She does so many reviews, tutorials, first impressions. She is so colorful makeup focused. If you like my content, you'll probably like her content. We've been friends for such a long time. I think her and I started talking right before she created her channel a few years ago. She's like my longest YouTube friend out of everybody. I adore Annette. I think she's wonderful. Her channel and her video will be down in the description box. She's always so great at experimenting with different color combinations, different formulas. She tries so many indie brands out. She tries far more makeup than I do. I feel like every new release she's able to get her hands on it. So if you're out there looking for like the newest makeup release, especially when it comes to indie, go check her out. She is on top of it. I didn't even tell you what today's video is. Basically Annette and I knew we wanted to collab during December and she was planning on starting a series where she ranks all of the products from a specific brand and she invited me to do the Kaleidos one with her and I'm very excited about it. I'm a little overwhelmed. There's a lot of products from Kaleidos. I'm interested to see what Annette's rankings are going to be because I think we're gonna have very different opinions on certain things. <laughs> I don't even know exactly how her ranking system is gonna go. I'm doing mine kind of like by category and then ranking within the category. That's how I'm gonna do it. I personally don't think I could like rank like an eyeshadow palette and a lipstick together because like my brain isn't gonna work that way. <laughs> I don't know how to decide like which one is better because they're two completely different things. So I decided for me, for my portion of the video, I'm just gonna do categories and then rank within the categories. And I think that'll be very fun. Her and I both own, I believe, every single thing Kaleidos has ever come out with. So this is gonna be fun to just really break down this brand and chat about our favorite and least favorite things from them. Annette, thanks for inviting me to collab with you on this video. I think it's gonna be very fun. I'm also in interested in seeing what you guys in the comments have to say about the Kaleidos products. Out of everything that you own, I want you to rank everything as well, whether it's by product or if it's by category like I'm gonna do, I would love to hear your answers. Before we hop into the video itself, I did of course film this look. I played with a lot of Kaleidos makeup because I figured that would be appropriate. That should already be on my IGTV by the time this video goes up. This is a Christmas brand wig. Check my FAQ in the description box if you need spelling and I have no clue where this beanie is from because it is very old. Anyways, let's just hop in and rank these Kaleidos products. Okay, so I have 10 categories. <laughs> so we're gonna start from category 10 and work our way up to category number one. And within each category, if there's more than one item, I will also break those down. But I'll try to keep it as clear as possible what's going on. Before we get into the ranking itself, I also wanted to mention that I don't hate anything from Kaleidos. Like literally nothing I hate. I think everything is at least decent, even if it's not my favorite thing. So please don't get offended, of course, if one of your favorite products from Kaleidos is at like the bottom of one of my categories. It's not that deep. I I truly adore most things from Kaleidos and even the things that I don't love, I don't hate, if that makes sense. Ranked number 10, I ended up putting the Kaleidos makeup sponges. There was a purple one as well. I did completely use that one because I was trying to thoroughly test this one out. And I'm just not a regular sponge kind of person. I feel like they're fine sponges in general, but I'm a microfiber sponge person, so this just isn't my favorite makeup tool. It's not a bad product, it's just not my perfect sponge. So that's why I ranked it as number 10. And I honestly don't even know why I'm hanging on to this guy. I can't give it to a friend because it does have makeup on it, but I also don't wanna throw it away because it's not that used. I'm probably just gonna have to break down and actually get used out of this, but yeah. This is ranked number 10, category 10, very bottom of the barrel for me. <laughs> All right, category number nine, and I actually do not have this one anymore, and I'll explain why, but it's the eye primer. I'll pop a picture up here just so it's there for you to look at. I think it's a fine eye primer. I think the formula is nice. My shadows blended nice on top of it. I ended up ultimately decluttering it in a recent declutter video just because it's a little too messy for me. It's a little bit squirty out of the tube, and it's also just a little bit too deep of a pigment for me personally. But overall, I did think it was a good eye primer. I just had so many other eye primers that I decided to give that one to a friend, but it's not a bad eye primer, but it is number nine on the list. I do like it more than the sponge. Okay, category number eight is gonna be my face brushes. I decided to separate face brushes and eye brushes because again, they're completely different things and I feel very differently about both sets. But ranked number eight are my face brushes. I have four from them. One doesn't 
exist anymore and I'll get into that. But in category eight, ranked number four is the new B1 blush brush. This is only ranked in the bottom of this category because it's not my perfect shape for a blush brush. I prefer something more angled, but I did use it. I've been using it the last couple weeks just to test it out. I think it's a fine brush. It's fluffy. It looks nice. It works fine. It's just not my favorite brush for blush. And it's also a little too fat for me to use as like under eye setting powder. So I mean, I will get use out of this. It's just not my favorite brush in the world. So that's why it's at the bottom. Again, still in category eight, Ranked number three out of four is the C1 Angled Contour Brush. I think this is a fine brush. I've been using this lately for my cream bronzer. I'll just kind of tap it on my cream bronzer product and then just go to town on my cheekbones. I think it works good. I do like the other brushes I'm about to talk about more, which is why this is ranked number three, but I think this is a fine brush. Ranked number two out of four in category number eight is the H1 Highlight Brush. This was their original highlight brush. I loved this for such a long time, and I still think it's a fantastic highlight brush. They do not have this one anymore. They ended up doing a newer version, which I will get to obviously in a second, but I think this is a fantastic highlight brush. It's very nice. It's very dense and small, so it's nice and easy to get precise. I like this brush a lot. And then ranked number one in category number eight is the H2 Precision Highlight Brush. I think this is so good. It's even tinier. I'll hold them up next to each other just so you can kind of see. It's just a wee bit smaller. It's not quite as fluffy, but I kind of like that. I was worried I wasn't going to love this brush very much when I got it in the mail, but I do. I like it a lot. I've been using it the last couple weeks, and I just think it's perfect for getting nice and precise. It's very dense, but it's also fluffy enough to blend the product out. This is a great highlight brush. All right, moving on to category number seven, we have their Lip Tonic Liquid Lipsticks. They have five liquid lipsticks and I have them ranked for you. I will include swatches of them in order from favorite to least favorite at the end of this segment, just because it'll be too hard for me to swatch every product in this video and I want you to be able to see them laid out and it's hard to tell in the two what they look like. But ranked number five, this is the shade Ambition. I only ended up putting this one as number five, one, because it's a metallic red. I'm not a huge metallic liquid lipstick person unless it comes to holidays and the next one I'm about to talk about is also a metallic red and I just like the tone a teeny bit more. So that's why this one's at the bottom. Again, I still think it's a great liquid lipstick formula. It's very comfortable. It's just not the one I reach for the most. <laughs> And now ranked number four is Collision, the other metallic red. I just like this tone a little bit more, but again, I don't wear metallics very often, literally only when it comes to holiday. So I've been wearing this one quite a bit this month, but overall just not my favorite lipstick as far as like color and finish, but it's still like nice. Ranked number three, right in the middle. This is the shade Injection. These next three liquid lipsticks have more of a blotted lip kind of formula. They're not completely opaque like a typical matte liquid lipstick. It has a little bit more of a sheer finish and you can just kind of work it around your lips. You can kind of build it up. You can leave it more sheer. I personally love that kind of a formula. It's very comfortable. But this shade Injection, it's only in the middle because it's a little bit too peachy. I'm not a huge fan of peachy lips on me. It just doesn't suit my skin tone perfectly. I don't hate this, however. I'll still wear it. I think it's fine. I just like the other two a little bit more. So that's why this is ranked number three. Ranked number two is actually the one I'm wearing right now. It's the shade Immersion. It's just a really nice mauve neutral color. Again, I like the finish of it. I think it's very comfortable. This is a great liquid lipstick, and that's why it's high up on the list. However, number one in category number seven is the shade Infusion. This one is just a little bit more neutral. Neutral. It's not too mauve not too peachy, not too cool, not too warm. This one's just a pretty good standard neutral lipstick. As much as I love Immersion, the one I'm wearing right now, the Infusion one, I'm just more bound to reach for just because of the fact that it's just pure neutral. So that's why this one's number one. I'm happy with this decision. Again, listed out in the order of favorite to least favorite, Infusion, Immersion, Injection, Collision, and Ambition. They aren't gonna be the best swatches in the world because again, they have that sheer aspect, but it at least gives you an idea of the colors next to each other. All right, category number six is going to be my eye brushes. I love their eye brushes so, so much. The only reason these aren't higher up on the list is just because the following products I love and reach for even more than these brushes, but I love these brushes. I honestly want to get like more sets of these specific brushes just so I have like an abundance of every brush. I did use the brushes to help create my eye look today, so if you want to see them in action, go check out that Instagram video that I mentioned before. In category number six, there are five eye brushes, so let's get to ranking. In fifth place, this is the Kaleidos S5. It's a teeny, teeny, tiny little pencil brush. I love this brush. The only reason this one is so far on the bottom of this list is just because 
I love my fluffy brushes a little bit more and I have so many pencil brushes. Even though this one's fantastic, at the end of the day, it's still just a pencil brush. I use it for my inner corner today. It's very nice and precise. If you need a teeny, teeny, tiny little pencil brush, this is a great one. Ranked number four in category number six, this is the S3 brush. It's kind of like a tapered blending brush. I feel like this type of shape is perfect if you're trying to like blend shadow on the lid while also blending it a little through the crease. Really like this brush. I kind of use this for the deepening of the inner and outer corner so I could kind to pack it down and blend a little bit. Love this kind of a brush. I just use the other ones a little bit more, so that's why this one's number four. Ranked number three, this is the S4 brush. This one is flat. It's not the flattest of brushes. I have other flat eye brushes that I use for cut creases that are flatter than this. This one's a little bit bigger, but it still works great. I used it for my cut crease, the Action Halo Eye today for my lid, and I just think it's nice. I just like my next two brushes a little bit more. Ranked number two in category number six, this is the S1 brush. This is their biggest fluffy brush. I usually use this for like that lightest shade in the crease to really help blend all my dark shades out. I reach for this one and the next one constantly. I think they are beautiful blending brushes. They are so soft and fluffy. They do the job great. And the best of the best in category number six, this is the S2 brush. It's another fluffy brush, but it's just a little bit skinnier. I will hold them so you can kind of see. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but this one's just a little bit smaller, a little bit skinnier, but it's not like a tiny blending brush. It's still a larger fluffy brush, but I use this one for a little bit more precision, a little deeper in the crease. I use this one a lot more. I love this brush. All right, ranked number five, we just have one product and that is the Charisma Contour Palette. I personally have the Cool and Light Palette. I love this. I'm not wearing it today because I'm not really on a contour kick right now, but I use this non-stop in October. It was crazy. I use this so much. I personally think this bottom shade is a perfect contour shade for under my cheekbones. I've used the lighter one for like under my chin a couple times. And this highlight shade works great for kind of cleaning up under my contour. I feel like it blends like a dream. It's so easy to work with and I think the color is just perfect for me. I just love the next categories far more than this because obviously I'm not even wearing this today. I don't feel like contour is a necessity, but I do love this little contour palette. I think this is my favorite contour palette in my whole collection. All right, category number four, we are gonna talk about blush. These are the Lo-Fi Blushers. I love these. I don't think they're available anymore because they're going to be redoing the packaging is what I understand. But either way, I'm still gonna talk about them. I love them. There are only two, obviously, the two that I just held up. So in technically last place, but also second place in category number four, this is the Lo-Fi Rose one. Both of them include a matte blush and then kind of a highlighty shade. Doesn't really work as a highlight on me. I would usually kind of mix the two together to make like a glowy, blushy, ethereal kind of situation. This is actually the one I'm wearing today. I just felt like it complemented this cool toned look. I think it's very cute. They're very blendable. I'm excited for them to bring them back because I think it's a fantastic formula and it's good. And then the best of the best in category number four, this is the Low Fat Peach. This is just really up my alley for blushes. I love a good peach blush. Again, it has the matte and then kind of that highlighty shade. I'll mix the two together. I'll wear just the matte by itself. I think they are fantastic and the color is just super, super cute. Oh, we're finally getting to the top three categories. If you're familiar with Kaleidos, you can probably guess what order these are going to be in. But category number three are going to be the Lucid Lip Glosses. And again, at the end of this segment, I will also include swatches. I didn't do swatches of the blushes just because they aren't available anymore. And there's also only two. It's kind of easy to tell the difference. But I am going to include swatches of all the glosses because they have a similar feel, but they're all completely different. All right, for category three, ranked number five, last place is Mesmerize. The only reason this one is so low is because all four of the other ones have sparkles in them and they're more of that sheer sparkly feel which is completely my favorite type of gloss. This one's just a cream finish. It's a beautiful shade. It's a very just cute mauve shade but because it doesn't have that sparkle that I love that's why this one's at the bottom but it's a fantastic formula. So comfortable. Ranked number four is the shade Hypnotize. Again like I said all of these have kind of that sheer sparkly aspect. I personally don't feel the glitter. It just looks like very soft sparkle. It's very whimsical. These are so slippy feeling. I love the texture of these glosses. The only reason this one is number four is because it's just not my favorite color. It's very warm, corally, a little bit brighter. The other three are a little bit softer, a little bit more muted, which I kind of prefer with my gloss. So this one's still very cute. It's just not my favorite color out of the bunch. Ranked number three in category number three, right in the middle, we have the shade Dramatize. This one's also warmer, but I just, I like the pinkiness a little bit better, whereas this one has a little bit more of a 
a purpley pink and I just feel like I'm more apt to reach for this one. Those two are probably tied if I'm being honest with you, but I do like this one uh, dramatized just a teeny bit more. Ranked number two here in category three, this is the shade Fantasize. I love this gloss. It has just a very soft peachy feel. It's not super bright or out there. It's very pretty. I love this in the spring and summer, especially such a lovely gloss. I've worn this more times than I can count. And number one, if you know me at all, you would probably be able to guess this, but my number one favorite in category number three is the shade Crystallize. It is a sheer with like little micro blue purpley sparkles. It's so beautiful. I've worn this so many times. Again, it's just so slippy and comfortable. I think the color is just so cute. It does not look blue on the lips. It just gives you that kind of light twinkly bluey sparkle. It's beautiful if you're wearing like a blue or purple look or even a green look. So, so cute. I love this gloss with my whole heart. And now let me just play the little swatch montage for you in order from favorite to least favorite. We have Crystallize, Fantasize, Dramatize, Hypnotize, and Mesmerize. Okay, let's move on to category number two. Category number two for me is going to go to the Space Age Highlights. I love their highlight formula so much. I think it's fantastic. I wear their highlights all the freaking time. I just think they're so wonderful to work with. I love how all of the packaging is so customized. All of the shade names are so cute. Everything is so different. I love these highlights. We have 11 to talk about, so let's just break it down. Again, I will include swatches of all of these next to each other at the end, just so you can see them all compared to each other. All right, for category number two, ranked number 11, this is the shade Ray Rider. It's a very soft, just champagne-y kind of color. The only reason this is so far on the bottom is just because it's the most basic and neutral. I do love this highlight, do not get me wrong. I don't dislike this in the slightest. It's just the least exciting out of the bunch, and I'm not always gonna reach for this one when I want a normal highlight. I have a lot of normal highlights in my collection, but this one's still great. It's just my least favorite from Kaleidos in general. This is the reformulated version. I no longer have the original. I did pass that one along to a friend. They're not that much different though, so you won't see the difference in the swatch comparisons because I don't have that one, but this one's just a little bit like brighter and creamier, which I do prefer. Ranked number 10, this is the shade Star Surfer. This one also is just a little bit more basic. That's the only reason it's down so low, but I do like this one a teeny bit more than Ray Rider. It's a very, very, very soft baby pink. It almost doesn't even even look pink on the cheeks. It's a very much like a cool toned icy color. It's very cute, very lovely. I just haven't been as apt to reach for this as some of the other ones in the collection, but it's still adorable. And I just love how the packaging is all so different on all of them. It's so just attention to detail. I love it. Ranked number nine, this is the shade Comet Catcher. This one is very fun. I love wearing this one for very like ethereal pinky looks. It has a nice soft pink shift to it. It's very much like a pink shine on the cheeks. The first two have a little bit of sparkle in them. This one's more of like a flat, not a flat finish, that's the wrong word. It's just like a smooth glow rather than a sparkly glow, if that makes sense. I do prefer the sparkle from Kaleidos more, but this one is still really cute. It's just not my favorite compared to the ones ahead of it, but it's still a really fun one. I like it more than the previous two. Ranked number eight, we have the shade Solar Sailor. This one is a very fun kind of blue to gold duochrome action. Again, this one doesn't really have sparkle in it. It just has that like unique glow to it. It's very, very fun. I like it more than the previous ones, but just not as much as the other ones, but I still think this one's fun and fantastic. It's very, very cute. Ranked number seven, this is the original Mars Melter. They did reformulate it to a different highlight, and honestly, in my opinion, it's a completely different highlight. It's not even this one beefed up. It's like a completely different highlight in general, but Mars Melter is our next one. It looks like this. Again, this one doesn't have sparkle to it. It's just like a unique glow. It has kind of a soft pinky red finish. I really I recently used this in a peppermint inspired uh, makeup look and I used this because it reminded me of like that pinky tone that happens when you suck on a candy cane and the red and the white kind of mixed together. That's kind of what this reminds me of. It's a very cute pinky reddish glow. So, so pretty. But again, not as pretty as the next ones to come, but I like it more than the ones I just talked about. Ranked number six, we have Skywalker. This is one of my favorites in my whole collection. I just think it's so pretty. It's a very soft baby blue. It does have sparkle in it. It's so cute and twinkly. I absolutely adore this highlight. I think it's so much fun and so easy. I feel like there's quite a dent in here, actually. I've used this one a lot. I actually thought this would end up a little higher on the list, but the next five beat it out, but I still love this one. I guess it's a good solid middle favorite for category number two. Ranked number five is the new reformulated Mars Melter. I'm in love with this. Ever since I got it, it's just 
become one of my favorites. It has sparkle to it, unlike the previous Mars Melter, and this one just has even more of a vibrant pink-red flash. It's not so much of a soft one, it's much more prominent. It's so much fun. I love this highlight, I think it's so cute. I just like the next four a little bit better. Ranked number four, and this one breaks my heart because it's no longer available, but this is Laser Glazer. It is the coolest, like, green shift. It is so much fun. It makes a beautiful eyeshadow, a beautiful green highlight, even on my fair skin. It just looks so alien. Oh, it's so cool. Kaleidos, please, please bring this one back. It's so much fun. I adore this one. But I like the next three just a little bit more. <laughs> this next one is Prophecy. This is their new multi-chrome highlight. A lot of people were assuming this would replace Laser Glazer. It does have a green shift, but I feel like on me personally, the fuchsia coraliness transfers a lot more than the green does. So for me, this doesn't replace Laser Glazer in the slightest, but it's still stunning, holy cow. It does have sparkle in it. Laser Glazer does too. I don't know if I mention that and it's just such a beautiful beaming unique highlight I get so many compliments when I wear this it is so much fun I thought I would like this highlight but I wasn't sure I'd be as in love with it as I am right now I mean it's top three of category number two I love this highlight but ones that I love a little bit more ranked number two this is moon cruiser I just love this one. I think it's so unique and fun. This has a little bit of sparkle to it as well, and this is just the most beautiful blue-violet duochrome. It's so interesting and ethereal, and I just love it. I wear a lot of blues. This complements a lot of those. It would even look good with this look that I'm wearing right now. I just think this is such a fun highlight. I can't get enough of it. But rounding it out, number one best of the best of my highlights in category number two, this is Diamond Dasher. It's what I'm wearing today. It's the prettiest soft pink, but it still has like a prominent pink shift, but not so pink that it's like a bright hot pink stripe either. It's so cute. This also has sparkle in it. This is mostly ranked number one because I've reached for it more than any of the others. I just think it's so pretty and lovely. It's obviously not the most unique one compared to some of the ones I talked about, but I can't lie. I reach for this one the most. I think it's so pretty and easy to wear goes with a lot of the things I do. So Diamond Dasher rounds it out at number one. And really quick, let's just insert the little montage of all the swatches in order from favorite to least favorite. We have Diamond Dasher, Moon Cruiser, Prophecy, Laser Glazer, the new Mars Melter, Skywalker, the original Mars Melter, Solar Sailor, Comet Catcher, Star Surfer, and Ray Rider. And that rounds it out for category number two, the Space Age Highlights. And all right, so if you couldn't have guessed, we are now on category number one, and that goes to the eyeshadow palettes. Their eyeshadow palettes just kill it for me. I adore them so, so much. They get me so inspired, so excited. Again, all of the palettes are so customized and unique to their own color story, and it's just so cute. The attention to detail makes me so happy. The themes are adorable. I think it's such a cool thing they're doing with their palettes, and they had to be number one for me. We have eight to talk about in this category, and at the bottom of the list, if you've watched my videos, you can probably guess what that's gonna be, but it's actually gonna be the Escape Pod. I don't hate this palette, I just have more gripes with this palette than I do with any of the other palettes. My biggest complaint mostly is just that this blue doesn't really work for me. It's so patchy, I cannot make it work for the life of me. I feel like the two shimmer greens in here are a bit too similar, and I also feel like these kind of orangey corally shades are also a bit too similar on the eye. I also just don't love the larger palette from them. I love their curated six pans. This one just doesn't make my heart sing as much as the other ones. I still like this palette. I don't hate this palette by any means. I just have more gripes than the other ones, which is why it is number eight on the list for category number one. Let's move on though now to number seven. This is my Cyber Bronze palette. This is the Futurism 2 palette. It looks like this, and again, I think it's fantastic. I actually included this in my winter favorites video because it's very holiday <laughs> to me. It's very easy to create those cozy neutral looks with a pop of red. Very Christmas, but it's very cute. It's just the most boring out of the bunch for my preference, but I still think it's lovely. I've created really pretty looks with this in my opinion. I just like all the other ones a little bit more, <laughs> but I do like this more than the Escape Pod. Ranked number seven is the VR Neon. I actually thought this was gonna be higher on the list, but as it turns out, I like all the other ones a little bit more than this one, but I love how creative and fun this is. This one unfortunately is no longer available, but I wish it was. The neons are so bright, but they actually blend really easily, especially for being neons. These two shimmers are so stunning especially this pink one. I think it's called Easter Egg. Yes, it's called Easter Egg. It's so fantastic. I've created so many looks with all of these palettes, actually. If you want look inspiration, just type Butte Bean and 
name of palette and that'll be that for you but this is very cute I enjoy this one my camera battery died because I've been sitting here talking for so long so if my background suddenly looks like it shifted that's why but now we are on I guess number five this is the futurism one sci-fi green palette this is a grungy green lover's dream I just I love the dirty olive shades the shimmers are so pretty I love this kind of greeny yellow this golden yellow is so pretty i even like this brown shade it's a little bit mustardy and i love that this is a fantastic black one of my favorite blacks in my collection overall this is a very solid palette i love this one i love a good grungy green and this one comes through for me you know we're almost done with the video and i realize i never introduced myself if anyone new from annette's channel came over here hello i am betty jean um, I like color too, and I talk about makeup a lot. Um, hi. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. All right, ranked number four, and this was originally going to be my ranked number three, but I just spontaneously changed it because the one I was going to put as number four, I do like a little bit more, but this is number four. This is the Futurism 3 Astro Pink Palette. I used it to help create this look today, as well as another palette that I'll talk about in a minute. I think this one is so, so much fun. We have two neutrals. We have this beautiful pink matte that's in my crease. This blue is such a good blue. It's so pretty. It's on my inner and outer corner of my lid. You won't really be able to tell because I have a lot of duochromes going on. It's so pretty. This shade is in my inner corner right now. Overall, this is a beautiful palette. I think it's very, very fun. I mean, all of these palettes are very fun. That's the thing. That's why I like these six pans. They just get my creative juices flowing so much. I love this one a lot, but I like the next three just a teensy bit more. Ranked number three, that was originally gonna be number four and I changed my mind at the last second. This is the Sashimi City palette. This is the Futurism six, I believe, seven. This is the seven. I freaking love this palette. I did not expect to love this as much as I do. It's mostly neutrals, but they're so special special. And the two duochromes in here make my heart skip every beat. It's so pretty. I love these two kind of pinky toned mattes. The yellow is really cute. I love this palette. I found myself feeling more creative with this palette than I expected. I think it's very easy to use if you're someone who is scared of color but wants to kind of dip your toe in it. This is where I would start from Kaleidos. It's so pretty. I absolutely love this one. But I love the next two a little bit more and if you've been here before you probably know which two are my favorite. Ranked number two, this is my Electro Turquoise palette. I call it my perfect Taco Bell palette because it reminds me of the Taco Bell colors, like the old school ones. <laughs> this one's a lot of fun. Again, the shimmers in here are out standing. They are so twinkly and reflective on the lid. They are so out of this world. I love the teal and the turquoise in here. They're so saturated and they blend like a dream. Even this brown works really well with these colors. I'm not a huge orange person. You don't catch me wearing orange too much, but this one's a pretty solid orange. I like how bright and impactful it is. This is such a fun palette, and especially with it being mostly turquoise, I still find myself like getting quite the variety of looks. I love this palette. But of course, in category number one, ranked number one, this is probably my favorite product from them ever, ever. It's so much fun. This is my Futurism 6 Lunar Lavender Palette. I love this one. I'm wearing it to help with my eye look today as well. Looks like this. It is a lavender dream. Again, the two shimmers in here, outstanding. This one is in the center of my lid and it's just so... It's everything. I, I'm speechless with this palette. The two purples in here blend like a dream. I even like the two browns in here because they have kind of a mauviness to it. They're very beautiful. I love this palette. I cannot get enough of it. It is stunning. Kaleidos killed it with this one. I mean, they really killed it with all of their six pans, but especially this one, the Lunar Lavender. It's just amazing. So yeah, these are all of my Kaleidos products ranked. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very difficult for me to create this list. I spent a good chunk of the day yesterday kind of getting my thoughts around this list, but I'm happy with my decisions. I think my ranking makes sense to me. I'd love to know what you think. Do you agree with any of my decisions? Are you completely opposite? I can't wait to see Annette's decisions. I have a feeling her escape pod's gonna be much higher on the list. I wouldn't be surprised if the escape pod was number one for her. I'm so curious to see like what her favorite highlights are, her favorite lip products from them. I just love Kaleidos. I think they are such a cool brand. I think they are definitely going places. I can't wait to see what they come out with next. Thank you again, Annette, for collabing with me. Again, in case you missed it before, her video and her channel will be down in my description box. Please go check her video 
out and tell her I sent you. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me an emoji relating to space because I feel like space is the overall theme for Kaleido. So give me an emoji relating to outer space in some way, shape, or form. And if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please hop over to my Instagram. It's Butte Bean. Follow me there. I post every single day. And don't forget to subscribe because I've been posting every single day in December as well. Please make sure you're staying informed with everything that's going on in the world. There will be links in my description box that will take you to information and resources and ways in which you can help. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.